This is Math 152. We're looking at Section 3.4, uh, Part 2. So last time we talked about doing um, partial fraction decomposition. So taking things like uh, 3x over x squared minus x minus 2. But now let's say we're going to want to take the derivative of that. And then remember what we did was we broke this up and we rewrote it as two fractions added together. And then what's great from that is now we can um, we can break this up through the addition and just take those integrals separately, each of them in their own piece. And before we do that, I want to remind you of uh, of two two integrals that I think we'll find happy. And one of them is if I've just got something over u, that's just a natural log of it. And if there's some constant, then that's just the constant. Uh, notice that applies to this case and this case really well. And the other thing I want to point out is uh, this derivative, you will have, I'm sorry, this integral, you will have seen it as a derivative before with inverse, uh, inverse tangent. And you could get there doing substitutions. But these are two good ones to have. As a matter of fact, let's add them to our, to our lookup tables. Where did that thing go? Ah, oh, there it is. One of them is just so we can remember, and I'll write it this way. I'll write it in terms of x. And then the other one Arctam. All right, there's two that we can refer back to. So last time we broke this up with this using that, that uh, partial, partial fractions decomposition. And remember what we did was we went, uh, factored the bottom, rewrote it as stuff over each pieces, right? Over that factor and then B over that factor. We talked about techniques to solve this to get the A and B values. And then we did this. So here is work that we did last time that we know how to do, we get to there. And then this, well, uh, integral of one over anything is natural log of that. And this, you can think of this too as just a constant that can come out. So this would be two times natural log of x minus two. There's that derivative. So remember when we we're writing this, our a value ended up being one, our b value ended up being two, and then we can break it up in just the integral. So I'm going to assume that you're good doing this uh, these partial fractions because we had all that practice time from it from last time. So here are some ones for us to consider. So it's in this sort of form. Um, and then if I was gonna do this one, notice I've got a higher degree in the top than in the bottom. So I'm gonna do some long division on this one first before I try to do my partial fraction breakup. So x goes into x squared x times. x times x is x squared. That's going to cancel out. I want that to happen. X times 1 is X. And then I subtract this whole thing. So X squared minus X squared is 0. 3X minus X is 2 uh, plus 5. And of course, this is 2X, what I should have written. Um, I can keep going. X goes into 2X two times. So 2, so 2 times X, 2X. 2 times 1 is 2. Subtract this. 5, uh, 2x minus 2x is 0, 5 minus 2 is 3. So now 3 is my remainder, and that remainder is still being divided by that x plus 1. Uh, so I can write this as x plus 2 plus the remainder being divided by x plus 1. Now one breaks right up. I didn't have to do the a, b thing. Notice I have these three things added together, so I can, I can break it up this way. So I got that constant out there. So I've got this. And that is done. There's that integral. Let's try another one. Something like that. And uh, like I said, I'm going to leave you to do the partial fraction work. But on this one, you know, when you factor this, you'd factor out an x and then factor this into what multiplies the negative 2, add the negative 1, uh, x minus 2 times x plus 1. So you break it up that way, right? And then you, you set it up as 
over all that equals a over one of them plus b over one of them, one of the factors, plus c over the third factor. And use those techniques from last time to work it on out. So there's a cloud of work that you just did, and we ended up with this. And remember, this 4 thirds times that, that means your B value was 4 thirds. You, you might have written it like that. It's the same thing. Or you might have written it like that. It's the same thing. So now I do these uh, integrals. These are all 1 over something, so like 1 over U. So they're all natural log. So negative natural log of x plus this constant, which is great. Notice how using that partial fraction technique broke it up into these pieces for us, and then we could do that integral. I'm going to do two more examples. And just for the record, when you go to break that one up, I'm just going to set it up. We have a linear factor that's repeated. So. We need to write it this way. And again, that's from last lecture. You do all that work, you get your A, B, and C values, and then it can get broken up into this. This piece is just, you know, that two constant, right? This is just this. So that would be two natural log of that. This is just that minus one. So this is just going to be minus natural log of that. Then how about this one? 3 over this whole thing squared. Well, let's take a peek at that just so we can remember how to do this type of one. I'm going to do a u substitution here. I'm going to let u equal 2x minus 1. So du. And so I've got this 3 constant, so I'm going to pull it out. Um, since this was 2. Um, so that would mean du, one half of du would take place of the, the dx. So I've got one half, one over u squared du. So I can even take that half out of there. This is u to the negative 2. It would end up being u to the negative 1 um, times the negative 1 times 3 halves. So that would be negative 3 halves. Um, and then 1 over whatever u is, we'll use 2x minus 1. So I'm going to write this as this, and I am there. So you are going to have to pull on, you know, all of your techniques that you, uh, that you know how to use integrals. One more example. So when you go to break this one up, you factor out that bottom, you get this. Notice we have this irreducible factor that's down here. So when we set this up, it'd be a over x over that factor. And then since this is a, a quadratic, you'd have to have a linear factor above it. So think of it as dx plus c over x squared minus 1. And then we know techniques to solve that out. You get your a, your b, and your c values. And you end up with... So I'm going to split this up. The 3x plus 2... And the two x is the three x is divided by this, and the two is divided by this. So I'm going to think of this as negative three over x dx plus three uh, x over x squared dx plus two over x squared. Oops, sorry, this should be an x squared plus one. All right, so this one negative three natural log of x. This one. And do some u substitution for it. Uh, 3x over x squared plus 1. So u is x squared plus 1. So du would be uh, 2x dx. So I'm going to substitute that in. That 3 is going to come out. Uh, this would be 1 half du equals x dx. This place is replaced with that. And this be, just becomes uh, 1 over u. So now I have uh, 3 halves, and this would be natural log of u. Oh, OK. So this would be 3 halves, natural log of, what did I substitute into that? x squared plus u. And then looking at this piece, notice this is in that form uh, x squared plus a squared. 
where a is one. If I look at my, I look up, it's in this form. So it's one over a, which is one, inverse tangent of x over a, and a is, a is one. So this will be two. This would be inverse tangent, arc tangent of x plus. There it is. All right. So that is um, that is 3.4 wrapped up. Post questions that you have. Uh, message me with anything that's going on. And uh, good luck.